Hello, and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 157, Self-Serving Blogs, recorded on Thursday, July 29th, 2021. From Zenata Consulting, I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. Yes, we shall. So we'll start out as usual with our announcements and events. Uh, we have our upcoming webinar on Zoho CRM Plus, our product overview. I wonder if it's going to be as popular as our Zoho One product overview was. That was uh, it's rapidly, I think we've got 11 plus thousand views this year in the last six months. Um, but we're going to go through every single thing that is in CRM Plus and why you may want it. Um, and as always, we've got other events that are coming up. And if you're interested in any of those things, you can head over to zanata.com slash events. And man, was today a busy day. Um, <laughs> we've got a ton. Yeah, we got a ton today. Most of these announced, yeah. of course, in the past couple of days. So uh, hopefully any of our listeners are able to jump into these if they did want to attend. Yeah. So between the special show we're doing, not Friday, but uh, uh, yeah, four, four events today. And uh, next week, do-it-yourself mobile apps. That should be pretty good uh, in our overview and best practices. Yeah, we need to get this list, get these people planning ahead of time. But if you want to find an event, just head over to Zanata.com events, and uh, that's where they all are. With that, let's jump right into the news. So I know we've talked about it in the past, Tyler, but Zoho Invoice is now free uh, for all SMBs. The crazy thing is I went to Zoho Invoice and there I thought it was free. I don't understand. Um, I'm not seeing the limitations here and I'm not seeing any other pricing. They're just saying it's free. <laughs> Period. And I remember the last time we were poking around, there was a limit on how many invoices you could send or how much revenue you could be driving through it. So I'm assuming maybe yeah. they're just not there on the, the uh, kind of marketing page. But I think yeah, there think are they're... some limitations here in terms of making sure they're keeping you honest as a small business. Yeah, there was, but I can't, they didn't put them in the article on the official announcement. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll just head over to the page and it'll have pricing and we'll see what it is here. But it sounds like it's just free. Um, you know, this is like we talked about it before, a little bit of a gateway drug to Zoho. I mean, Zoho Books is great. Mm -hmm. And my guess is you get hooked into Zoho Invoice, you're going to want Zoho Books, right? Yep. And um, which, by the way, Zoho Books has Zoho Invoice in it. Um, so then you're all, you're all set to go. Uh, but Good stuff. Good stuff. Absolutely. So, um, you know, nice, uh, nice job, Zoho. And then CRM Plus uh, had some recent updates added to it, but it's also, um, they added social, but there's also a bunch of updates to analytics here. Um, did you look at any of these? Were yeah, these a lot of these are covered? kind of the same, same types of updates that were coming out for Zoho Analytics, the 5.0 release, right? Increase the, uh, some new reporting. Um, you know, presentations that you can build through Zoho Analytics, kind of tying them into Zoho Show if you so choose. Um, so kind of a variety of updates that are on analytics. But if you are not on CRM Plus and you're on Zoho One, these also apply to you. They're not unique to CRM Plus. Um, yeah, I think a lot of those just around Zia automation, kind of doing some querying without having to build all of your reports yourselves. Um, so good updates there for, you know, maybe users who are a little less used to working within analytics. Yeah, and oftentimes, I mean, I think these things are always included in CRM Plus um, mm -hmm. when they come out, but then there's usually a separate announcement around that at all. Yep. Um, and then this is kind of cool. So Zia Search now has its own browser extension for Chrome, Edge, and Firefox. Mm -hmm. So, and this will search across 20 plus Zoho apps and search them all and find out what you're looking for. Now, I think you can go to search.zoho.com, right? And kind of get mm -hmm. that, same, that same thing. So this is basically just going to be a nice little Chrome extension. Tap it, away you go. Nice. Yeah, uh, I actually like, I nice like stuff. Zia search a lot, you know, like oftentimes people are going to be using books and CRM or, you know, desk and CRM and being able to quickly search a customer and have one place that you can open them up in two separate tabs into those two different applications. Just nice. It's saving you a click. You know, you're just searching that email once rather than twice. Um, yeah. So nice to be able to do that from Chrome. I'll actually probably install this myself. I would see myself using this. <clears throat> yeah. The nice thing about it too, it's a right click extension. So it's basically kind of being added in as a service. So mm -hmm. you uh, basically just highlight what you're looking for, then right click on it 
and uh, you get these nice options and it brings up everything you're everything you're looking for. So um, pretty, pretty nifty. Yeah. One of those nice benefits, little... I think, of uh, having a lot of applications in a shared ecosystem. So you're able to just yeah. search across them. Yeah. It's going to search books and CRM and, you know, documents. Uh, good, good, good stuff. All right. And then moving on, um, Zoho Recruit updates the interview logic kind of went through this in a little bit of detail. More than anything, it seems like they're just really changing the custom views you yep. get. Um, a lot of the default when, when custom views are being tweaked, right? Basically thinking that if you've not assigned a status or an outcome to an interview, it's still coming up in the future, right? If you've put a status onto an interview, it's already happened, right? So it's a completed interview. Now these... Of course, you can build out your own custom views. I think they're just changing around a lot of their default ones here to be a little bit more right. accurate based on um, you know these various statuses. Yeah, I, mean, I guess is they got some feedback and said, "Well, this really isn't <laughs> showing mm-hmm. us what we want to see." So, uh, better logic on the default custom views inside of Zoho Recruit. We said it was a slow. Zoho News Week. So, if we're covering that story, <laughs> then we know absolutely it must be. Um, and you know, this will get me going here. So Zoho uh, Notebook <laughs> now uh, integrates uh, directly into Zoho Meeting. Our headlight is wrong there. It, uh, it now integrates directly into Zoho Meetings. It did this before, and this is a completely updated version of that. It kind of used to pop up on the side. Now it's kind of got a really, really tight integration into uh, into Zoho Meetings. So it's kind of cool. So you're in a meeting just right there. You can go ahead and take the notes. They're going to save to your notebook. Um, and then what aren't they going to do after that, Tyler? <laughs> they're not going to go to the CRM. They're not. They're not going to go to the CRM. It's killing me, bro. One day. <laughs> it's I do. Me. I do like this though. It's nice to have it's the like, notes actually within the meeting interface, right? So you're not having to have two tabs open. Maybe you want to go full screen or something like that. You can still be taking your notes. Um, and it actually allows you to pull up a variety of notes. So you don't just take one for the meeting. You can actually pull up an existing note and add some extra color there as well. You can have associated notes and it's two ways. So if you actually are in Zoho meeting, you can click on the meeting and bring up the associated notes that are associated with that. So you can be in notebook or you can be a meeting and you can access the notes either way. Uh, and of course, download your notes as well. So, Hey, this is a workaround, download the notes and then upload the notes. Um, <laughs> or do what we did and just build a creator tool that sends rich text notes to the CRM that way. <laughs> yeah, you could do that as well. Our own little notebook, if you will. Um, anyway, very, very cool. Notebook team keeps chugging along and uh, I'm happy for them. Uh, all right. And then TrueSync got an update for Mac. Uh, came out for Windows a little while ago. And now it's for Mac and it's cool. I use TrueSync. Um, our entire work drive is backed up to a four terabyte SSD that I've got on my desktop here. So anytime anything goes in, it just takes all those files and puts them to this SSD. And it had some problems kind of with air handling files. It couldn't do. Um, there were some other things And this new version is uh, slick. It, it's, it's, it's really, really slick. And if you're not familiar with TrueSync, this allows you to basically synchronize from Zoho WorkDrive to your Mac or PC. You can be selective about it. It's going to show you all the files, but you can say, I want these locally on my hard drive. And it will pull down those local files to your hard drive. So they spent a lot of time working on this. None of this stuff is trivial, um, doing this, you know, mapping mm-hmm. this and just being allowing to pull other stuff in. So um, uh, it's been coming along quite well. So I like this app a lot, especially yeah. it gives you a drive. It gives you a drive. So you can just pull stuff in and access. So that's more than anything yeah. else. The nice thing too, is that if you're working with, let's say like a PDF or something that's in work drive and you pull it through TrueSync, you can edit it in your choice of PDF editor, right? And then just push it right back up to work drive all just through your desktop. It's really nice. I mean, I can imagine for me, most of what I'm working on, I can just pull it into writer, no big deal. But if you're doing design work or things like that, where you do really need to edit something with your tool of choice, right? This is a good way to do that while still getting the benefits of being in a cloud file environment. Yeah. And one of the, it's funny, we were, someone was asking about whether or not work drive scans for viruses, and we can't actually find that. 
we can't find if you just go ahead and drag something into work drive for scanning for viruses. But if you're using TrueSync on your desktop and you drag it to a folder on your desktop, it scans it for viruses before it uploads it to, uh, mm -hmm. to work drive. So I found too, just a fun fact for listeners, the CRM does scan spreadsheets for viruses when you go to import them. Good. I bumped into that Good. a little while back and found that. And it does I got to think, that. I have to think that even though we can't find it, that it actually is scanning stuff when you when you upload it to work drive. We just can't find the document that says that says it is. And then now workerly adds temp availability. So they had this before. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with workerly, it's an application that basically allows you to manage your 1099s, your temps, uh, those kind of people. Um, and this is kind of a nice app, especially if you're a big Zoho people user, because if you're using Zoho people and you want to have your employees in there, they actually, you have to add them. You have to pay for them. They have to be a paid user inside Zoho People. So if you're on Zoho One, you know, uh, it, you, it's kind of funny if you got the Zoho One instance where it's pick and choose, where it's not all your employees, uh, People becomes kind of useless because you actually have to add all your employees in order to use Zoho mm -hmm. People. But a lot of companies have temp workers. Um and they're not necessarily employees. And they've changed the way you can kind of handle their availability. So now, um, apart from the temps, you yourself can go ahead and change their availability status and it's kind of editable at any time. Did I miss anything on that? Nope, I think that's about it. It's just giving a couple extra options for you know identifying which temps are available, unavailable, you know, and so on. Kind of a simple update, but one I would imagine is pretty useful. Yeah, especially if you're using Zoho Workly. All right, buddy. And that brings us to our implementation of the week. This is a cool one. Uh, kind of talking about this pre-show a little bit, I think. Yeah, so this this is one that uh, one of our team members, Bruno, built out using Zoho Analytics, uh, basically pulling in some Zoho Books data. And so, you know, with, with Zoho Books, it's pretty common that we bump into customers who are going to be paying some type of commission plan based on invoices paid, right? You know, you get your commission once we get paid on that invoice. And one of the common challenges with that is that if you pull all of that invoice data into Zoho Books and you start pulling reports, and let's say you look at, you know, last month's payments so that you can calculate how much you owe everyone. Well, if someone had had to do a refund or a credit back or something on one of those invoices, if you're just pulling a report on invoices, it won't show that because those would go in as a credit note. And so, you know, basically working with a client who had set it up such that, you know, they had a table of the invoice sales and then a table of the credit note sales and we're just subtracting them to get the numbers. And at the end of the day, it wasn't taking them too long. It's not the end of the world, but, you know, it could be a little bit better. And so kind of what we did is, you know, you pull that invoice data, pull that credit note data into analytics. Um, you know, you create a query table which basically stacks the invoices and credit notes on top of each other with some identifiers so that you know this is a credit note and you know this is an invoice. Um, the purpose of doing the query is to make them into one table. So they have one amount column, they have one date column on when they happened, right? So you're actually able to put them onto one report. One little trick is we had to take all of the amounts from the credit notes and make them negative so that once you sum them, because they actually come in with a positive amount for the credit note, but against an invoice, you want to treat it like a negative amount, subtracting from sales. Um, and we're actually able to do this unioning the invoice and credit note items as well. So you can actually see that this credit note went to this specific item on this invoice to reduce sales. Um, then from there, you have one table where all invoices and credit notes are rolled up against salespeople. And you could just pull your reports directly from that, kind of create any dashboard, widget, or report that you're hoping to hoping to see just based on this one table. Wow. I didn't know it could be it's done. Time saver. That's totally yeah, slick. It's a time saver when you're, uh, <laughs> yeah, because it really, it makes sense. You don't want to pay a commission or you don't want to do something if you didn't actually make the sale, right? right? If, if we had to do a refund, then, you know, that, that shouldn't count towards someone's total. Um, so yeah, with a quick little SQL query, we're able to, uh, you know, create a table that allows us to do that. Very nice. Very nice. So All right. Thanks to Bruno on that one. Yeah, nice job. And that brings us to this week's read. I went to HubSpot. So basically they did this in 2019, 2020. 
Um, they did the 2019-2020 comparison uh, last year. This is really, I thought, an interesting one, though. So what they're saying is, uh, how are we doing in 2021 as opposed to 2019, which would be the last time things were normal? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, from here, we've got some really interesting numbers. So this is a 12-minute read, <laughs> and it uh, it goes on and on. It seems to me, reading through this, that almost Everything is down from a general marketing perspective, right? Website traffic and, uh, you know, but deals, deals are going up, right? Um, and to me, that's the, that's kind of the interesting, uh, the interesting aspect of this thing is just to watch that overall growth of, you know, what deals have been doing for the various markets as opposed to what they were looking like in 2019. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because historically there is a little bit of a summer slump. Mm -hmm. um, even for us in consulting, you kind of see that as well. Um, but if you look, it's not the case. I think everybody's maybe because we're just reopening now. Right. Yeah. I think the the interesting one here is the leisure and hospitality is such a, so overrun it's closing a ton more deals than normal. The web traffic is way higher. And it's got to just be that people can, you know, feel more comfortable leaving their houses again. You know, maybe they've got their vaccine and they're, you know, want to go on a trip. So they're booking hotels, they're booking flights, you know, all those types of things. And so you just see this big renaissance of all things leisure and hospitality now that, uh, you know, things are opening back up more and more. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy to see the demand and the 103,000 companies here. Um, yeah. And they, this, by the way, we've, I've always found this interesting because they're just mining their own client base. Yeah. <laughs> period. Um, yep. But they do, they do take some time here at the very bottom to say how we protect our customer client base. And, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, there's, there's, it's all generalized and we're tying it all in. So uh, there's a big disclaimer at the end of this article. Um, <clears throat> but interesting data. I think it, it kind of follows what we've seen, you know, wouldn't yep. you say? I mean, I think so. Yeah. If you look at it, I, I find it interesting that website traffic is just generally down. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's uh, quite, quite interesting, but great article. Pamela bump comes through again. Um, I always like what she does. She kind of does some amazing stuff over there. She's a great writer at Hub, a great researcher. I mean, I would almost look at this as this isn't really an article. This is just a nice research paper. Um, mm -hmm. And I love me, my research. Um, all right. And that brings us to what's new over on Zanata. And we've got two things, nine advanced. Not, this is not a self-serving article at all. <laughs> <laughs> we would, we would never do that. Uh, nine advantages of using a Zoho consultant. And look at the three of us. We were so young back then. I know. This look from, at that. If you're watching us on YouTube, this picture was taken. Um, you can just tell by my hair. As, yeah, October 2019, the last time I cut my hair, I think, right? Before I decided <laughs> to become a hippie and grow it out. Look how much younger I look now. Um, anyway, there we are. Uh, anyway, of course, there are advantages to using a consultant. I mean, I would say anybody setting up Zoho these days who is just out of the box going to do it, you know, maybe you don't need Zanata Consulting. You know, you don't need all the power we've got there. But man, you should just sit down with someone who at least if in the CRM can at least get you going in the right direction, mm -hmm. you know, I oftentimes, you know, when, and we see this often when we engage with someone that a lot of their problems derive back to just a few decisions made early on when they were setting the CRM up, you know, maybe it's an idea of, Oh, let's build this custom module instead of making a parent account in the standard accounts module. And then there's these right. cascading, list of problems, right? Now the sign integration doesn't work how you expect it. And, you know, so sometimes, yeah, especially if you're getting right at the beginning, you know, it's worth sitting down with someone, you know, if not us, just to make sure that you jump over some of those common pitfalls yeah. of implementing any software. Yeah. I mean, you know, the authorized partners, which, you know, the kind of smaller partners, usually, usually one two man shop, some of them are bigger. They just don't focus on Zoho. Um, you know, but some of these people, it's not going to cost you a lot of money. They'll just give you a few hours of your time and you can kind of dive in there and um, they can get you going. But, you know, for anything, once you get going at all, 
I mean, and you're really going to dig into it, you're going to want to partner because you need to take advantage of Deluge. You need to take advantage of scripting. You need to take advantage of automation. You know, I think one of the biggest problems makes, do you see the meme I sent out to the team earlier this week? Let me bring it onto the screen here. <laughs> Maximum number of custom fields. <laughs> you're asking, you for, this is something we see a lot, right? Yeah. You, you, go, you go into a record and there are literally 1 million custom fields that have been uh, set aside for the thing. And it's... Uh, it's it's pretty funny at the end of the day, but uh, anyway, that is uh, that is that. Anyway, great article uh, about why you should pay us to fix everything for you. Uh, and then uh, we've got a case study up there from uh, Flavor Paper, uh, great client of ours. Uh, love these guys. They make custom wallpaper, and they're in New Some York. Some really City. cool stuff. Really, really, really cool, cool stuff that stuff. they make. Yeah, and we uh, we did a whole bunch for them, and they were kind enough to uh, give us a case study. So go yeah, check. this was a fun yeah. one. We were able to kind of work through, um, you know, build out a whole quote management production management system. You know, basically, an order can contain some custom stuff, some off the shelf stuff, and those all have to go through their own workflows. Um, so using kind of a predominantly actually through CRM custom modules, basically to build a whole quoting and process management workflow. Um, you know, to get things end to end for them. Yeah, good, great stuff. Thanks to them. Uh, oh, a pleasure to work with those guys too. Super, Absolutely, super nice. And that's going to bring us to our pick of the week. Um, this is Envato Elements. Um, it's a subscription service for unlimited assets. And my the web team gave us this. It's basically got if you're building videos or websites or doing any kind of graphic work, you know, um, this is just a great, great, great resource uh, to go to. Uh, it literally, you know, you've got a YouTube channel and you want to do some stuff. You've got blogs, you, you know, any of those kind of things. Uh, it's just got, uh, it's got everything you kind of need uh, at some really, really good pricing. It's good stuff. I don't know if you probably haven't had a chance to play around with this. Um, no, I uh, I stay as far away from design as humanly possible. I like though yeah. that it's just a flat subscription. They're not going to bill you for any stuff you download on top of it. So you can go in there and yeah. use it for every asset you need for everything, and the price is exactly the same. Yeah, sixteen fifty a month is what an individual plan starts at. So you know you're out there, a little solopreneur, trying to get stuff done. Uh, it's a great great resource, and I kind of went to them. I said they asked me if I had a pick of the week. I said I don't. So uh, what have you got? And uh, they came up with that one and it is a good one. Also cancel anytime. I mean, like it, it really is just a cool little like a fair uh, deal. Yeah. Yeah. And last but not least, then that brings us to our tip of the week. Uh, this is me setting up filters inside of Zoho mail. Um, they're a little different if you're used to using, Gmail or if you're using Office 365, Zoho Mail actually has some extremely powerful filtering that, that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, Got to be careful though. I've, we've had people set up filters and all of a sudden they're not getting any mail. It's because everything got, you know, <laughs> thrown into some other bin. Uh, but if you want to keep a clean inbox, filters are definitely uh, a very important element in making sure that that happens. Absolutely. And uh, you can find all of those tips over at our YouTube channel. Uh, there, everything's there. Boy, Tyler, it's, it's creeping up here. <laughs> so whole one is going to overtake desk here any day. Um, but everything, all of our CRM Zen shows are there. All of our tutorials, all of our webinars, everything. Uh, you can uh, find it over at youtube.com slash Zanata. And with that, it takes us to our Q&A. Do we have anything, Wayne? Um, we didn't have a didn't have a question. We did have a comment. I think in solidarity with us and wanting some more notebook integrations. Uh, Wayne is hoping for projects and project tasks as well. Which, yes, that would be very nice. Ah. Um, yeah, we actually, as part of our everything that we do, run through runs through a creator app, and in our note taking section of the creator app, that actually writes to a running list of forum posts in the project because you can add rich text data or submissions to a forum inside of projects. So we've 
we ended up just building it ourselves on the, in that case. Um, so there is an API, I guess, is the, the point here, Zoho. If anyone's listening, you are able to do this. <laughs> there, where there's and a didn't we there's create, a in, in the CRM, we created a separate notes related list that uh, yeah, you could so use notes, you, but this allows you to do it from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when you take that meeting note in creator, it writes it to a creator related list at the CRM account level. And then it adds it to the relevant project for that account into a forum post, all just via API. Good stuff. All right. Well, one of our shorter shows clocking in here around 25 minutes, but uh, we hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please head over to Zanata.com. You can click on the contact us form and drop me a line. And on the website is where you'll find complete episodes as well as show notes with links to all the stories we discussed today. As always, you can follow us on your favorite social media platform and subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app, as well as on YouTube. We'll see you next Monday.